If you're taking engineering thermodynamics, you've probably noticed about 50 pages in the back of your textbook with tables that look sort of like this one. And the worst part about it is when you go back to look up a number, the number you find is usually not listed in the table. It's actually in between two rows or two columns. In order to find the numerical value you need for your problem, you're gonna to have to use linear interpolation. You'll use these tables throughout the entire course and even in follow-on courses as well. So in this video, we're gonna do five examples to teach you how to use them, or if you haven't used these tables in a while, to refresh your memory. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. It's my goal to help you graduate and to take advantage of as many professional development opportunities along the way so that when you graduate, you'll be set up for success in your job search, grad school admissions, or in starting up your own business. Your first step will always be to identify which table you need to use, since there's about 25 tables in the back of the book, but they're each duplicated for a different set of units. So in this problem, we're in the SI units, so make sure you go to the SI tables. The substance is water, so that narrows it down to the first few tables. And since you're asked to find quality, that tells you that you're gonna need the saturated water table because quality is only relevant for a liquid vapor mixture. So we're gonna use the temperature table, not the pressure table. So this is why we're using table A-2, and table A-2 has temperature listed on the left-hand column. For specific volume, the fluid value is 0 0.001, and the gas value is 106. One of the most common mistakes for this problem has to do with the specific volume for a fluid. If you notice at the very top of the column, there's the times 10 to the third. This tells you that every number in that column has already been multiplied by a thousand. So when you use it in the math, you need to actually divide by a thousand. And so this value here is 0 0.001, not one. And so in finding quality, you're essentially asking for this number 80, which is between the saturation fluid and saturation gas value, you wanna know what percentage of the way is it towards gas. A quality of zero would be exactly at the fluid value, a quality of one or 100% would be exactly at the gas value. So you'll set this up using a ratio. Your numerator is gonna show how high your specific volume is above the specific volume for the fluid. And your denominator is the total difference between specific volume for the gas and specific volume for the saturated fluid. You should always get a number between zero and one for quality. And in this case, we get a value of 0.752. And to check the answer, we'll look and see if this actually makes sense. Since 0.752 is higher than halfway, right, it's three quarters of the way, then our specific volume should be closer to the saturated gas value than the saturated vapor. And since our value of 80 is closer to 106 than it is to 0 0.001, a value of 0.75 makes sense. We're still in SI units, so when you go back to your tables, make sure you're still in the SI unit section. But this time we have a different substance, refrigerant R22. So make sure you're still not looking at water, make sure you switch over to an R22 table. So since I'm using the eighth edition of the Moran textbook, Fundamentals of Thermodynamics, this is gonna be table A-8. And we'll see what's different about this problem than the last one, is that we can use the saturated vapor column but unfortunately, our 0.16 megapascals is not listed on this table. When we convert to bar, we get a value of 1.6 bar, but that actually falls between two different rows. So this is gonna be a problem of vertical linear interpolation of interpolating between two rows. Fortunately, the steps are almost exactly the same. So I'll start off by writing down the values uh, that I know and that I'm trying to find. So 1.6 falls between 1.5 and 1.75 bar. And then I'm looking for the meters cubed per kilogram value that falls between 0.1472 and 0.1274. Just like in finding quality, I'm gonna set up two fractions with the smaller distance in the numerator and the total distance in the denominator. So for bar, that's gonna be 1.6 minus 1.5 in the numerator, 1.75 minus 1.5 in the denominator. So the numerator has your in-between value minus the lowest value, and then the denominator has the highest minus lowest. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the right-hand side, put my variable specific volume in the numerator minus the upper value, and then in the denominator, I'll subtract the two values from the table. It doesn't matter that each numerator and denominator here is going to be a negative number. If you wanted to switch their direction and have the 0.14 minus V 
and 0.14 minus 0.12, you would still get to the same answer because the minus sign in the numerator and denominator will both cancel each other out. With a little bit of calculator work, you get specific volume equal to 0.1393. To check this answer, we'll notice that the 0.16 is pretty close to the middle of 1.5 to 1.75, but a little bit closer to 1.5. So our final answer, 0.1393, should be kind of close to the middle, but slightly closer to 0.147. And that does make sense, right? Uh, halfway in between would be approximately 0.137. So we're a little bit higher than 0.137, a little closer to 0.1472. And so that does make sense. We're back to using water as our substance, but now we have English units provided. We can find these values in the saturated water table A-2E. Since we're given a specific volume that falls in between the saturated fluid and saturated gas, it is possible to skip the step of finding the exact numerical value for quality by setting up a ratio that compares specific volume to enthalpy directly. Essentially, we're looking for the value of H that is the same percentage distance between the saturated fluid and saturated vapor value as the 1000 is for specific volume. So I'm gonna start this problem by setting up my two ratios, one for specific volume and one for enthalpy. For both ratios, the denominator is gonna be the total gap between the saturated fluid and saturated vapor, and both numerators will be the smaller gap that's just between the value I'm trying to find and the saturated fluid. So with some calculator work, you get an enthalpy value of 905.97 BTU per pound. In order to check whether this answer makes sense, we're gonna look at the initial thousand that we started with and note that it is much closer to the 1207 than to the 0 0.01. So that means H should be much closer to 1087 than to 28. And an answer of 905 seems to fit that description. So if you're starting to notice a trend so far for all of these problems, we always set up a ratio with a smaller number on top, which is the number we're either given or need to find with reference to the fluid value. And then the denominator of your ratio has the total gap from the saturated vapor to the saturated fluid. And you can always check your answer at the end because your final answer should always fall in between the saturated liquid and saturated vapor values. And if your given value was closer to the saturated liquid, your final answer should be closer to saturated liquid. If your given value is closer to saturated gas, then your final answer should also be closer to the saturated gas. Example four, we're given water and in SI units, and we're provided with pressure and specific volume. This takes us to table A-3. And unfortunately, this is probably the most tedious case that you'll see, where because the pressure value that you're given falls in between two different rows. And you also have to find quality, which means that your value is in between the saturated liquid and the saturated gas. So this is going to be a double interpolation problem, where first we're going to do vertical interpolation twice for both the saturated fluid and the saturated gas. And then once we've found those two values, then you'll do a horizontal interpolation in order to solve for quality. So I started off by writing down all the numbers from the table that I'm going to use and then numbering the steps for the sequence. So first I'm going to do a step of vertical interpolation to find my specific volume for the saturated fluid. Then I'm going to do a vertical interpolation to find the gas value. And then lastly, I'll use the 2.0 that I was given to find quality using the VF and VG values. I set up my first fraction using the pressure values on the left-hand side in order to find specific volume for the saturated fluid that falls in between the 0.3 and 0.4. And step two, I set up the same fraction for the ratio between pressures and solve for VG. Now I can check before I move on that both of these intermediate steps make sense. And since I note that 0.32 is much closer to 0.3 than 0.4, these two values that I just found should be closer to the 0.3 values than to the 0.4s. So for VF, 0 0.001023 is closer to the 10223 than the 265, so that value makes sense. And for VG, the 4.982 is much closer to 5.2 than it is to 3.99, so that value also seems to make sense. And the last step to finish this problem will be to use the quality equation where I set up a ratio with the 
specific volume that is in the middle on top, and then the denominator is that total gap from saturated fluid all the way to saturated vapor. And we get a quality of 0 0.401, and checking to see whether this number makes sense, we're comparing 2 to the 0 0.001 and 4.98, and it makes sense since 0 0.001 is approximately 0 and 4.98 is approximately 5, uh, two should be about two-fifths of the way from zero to five, so an answer of 0.4 seems to make sense. Example five, almost done. This time we have a substance of water, pressure in megapascals, temperature in Celsius, so we're gonna be in the SI tables. But one clue that this is probably not gonna be the saturated water tables that were given both temperature and pressure. For saturated liquids, uh, temperature implies pressure, or if you're given pressure, that only occurs at one temperature. So the fact that we're given both is a clue that we may actually be in the compressed liquid or superheated gas tables. But if you weren't sure which, you could come to the saturated water table first, find that 0 0.03 MPA is 0.3 bar, and notice that the temperature there is 69.1 degrees. Since our temperature is 120 degrees, which is higher than the temperature here, we know that that would actually be a superheated gas. So looking at table A-4, the superheated vapor table, you see that our pressure actually falls in between two of these smaller mini tables. So this is gonna be an interpolation step. We're actually gonna grab one number from each table and interpolate in between them. The specific volume that we're looking for is going to be the same ratio in between the specific volumes in the two tables as the pressure of our substance is in between the pressures of the two tables. So I set up my fraction with both denominators being the total distances between the values in the two tables and the numerator being the value I'm given or trying to find as compared to the value from the table on the left. And as a reminder, it doesn't actually matter that the numbers on the right side fraction are both going to be negative because since both the numerator and denominator are going to be negative numbers, those negative signs will cancel each other out. And with a little bit of calculator work, we get a specific volume of 9.48 meters cubed per kilogram. And so now we want to check whether this number actually seems to make sense. When we look at the value that we were given for pressure, 0 0.03 MPA, that's much closer to the 0 0.035 than to 0 0.006. So our specific volume of 9.4 should be much closer to 5.16 than to 30, which it is. And that's an introduction or refresher on using the steam tables in the back of your thermodynamics textbook. If you learned something from this video and you want to see more like it, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, you should see on your screen right now a couple other example videos that YouTube thinks you might like. And so you may want to click on one of them to see more thermodynamics content or general college tips. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day.